Hello again, I'm Miss Jody of the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County in West Virginia. I have a story to tell you. It's an old folk tale from China, and it's about an old woman who finally discovers what's really important in life. And this is about Chen Yu Min and the Ginger Cat. Now in China, Chin is her last name, and they say it reverse what we do, but her name is Yu Min and her last name is Chin. Many years ago, in a village near Kuming, there was an official of the government called Secretary Chin. Now, this is Secretary Chin. This is a gentleman who was a very important official in this village. In the house by the lake, with the finest lacquer, which is a very shiny paint bowl, and lettered scrolls, and they hang big paper scrolls by their front door to say what's important in life from the sheer paper and many, many strings of cash. Now they kept their money, there were round coins or sometimes square coins with a hole in the middle and they put the string and all those coins were hanging from it. So they had strings of cash. Secretary Chin was a very wealthy man. Now the wife of this man, Chin Yu Min, felt that this prosperity was only what she deserved. Now here she is. So here is his wife. So we have the gentleman and his wife. She was proud and haughty, and she made her servants perform impossible and meaningless, worthless tasks just to collect smoke to put in a bottle. Now that, you know how hard that would be. In a cage, and then teaching the carp, the fish, to strut like roosters. She had her fish marching around, silly old lady, just for the fun of displaying her power. She laughed at beggars, and turned them away from her door. Ah, oh, she wasn't very kind, was she? And one day, Secretary Chin fell out of a small yellow boat, sank like a piece of carved jade. Oh my, oh my, what happened? To the bottom of the lake. And that was the end of Secretary Chin. So we're gonna take him and he's gonna go away because he's all gone. So now we have this lovely lady and it was the end of his of, and his wife luxury because he was the one who made the money. Good Chu Yu, Jin Yu Min, said her neighbors. Please allow us to help you in this time of loss. Ha, huh, said she scoffed. I don't need help from any of you, so be off. Very rude lady. She slammed the door in their faces and stomped away. For many months, she scolded her servants and haggled suspiciously with the merchants. She was sure that everyone was out to cheat her, and she answered their pleasant words with bitter phrases. Coin on the string, with it was, and her, her strings of cash flowed away from the, in the fish pond. Chin Yumin knew she would soon be poor, but she would rather have eaten ashes than have anybody know how poor she was. Oh, she said. She screamed at her servants. You are all less than useless. Leave my home. Well, she couldn't pay them anymore. When they were gone, she lived alone, tended house with her own hands to save money. Esteem, Chim Yu Min, said her neighbors. Allow us to help you. Who asked for your help, she replied. She slammed the door in their faces and stomped away. Poor lady. Chin Yumin lived alone for several more months, becoming poorer and poorer. At last, she was so, so poor as a mouse in a monastery. Not one chicken scratched in her yard. Her rice jar stood empty and cracked. The fine lacquer bowls were dulled by hard use, and the lettered scrolls of sheer paper flapped like ragged ghosts from the walls. One morning, when Chin Yumin woke up, she knew there was not a thing in the house to eat. She knew there was no cash, and she couldn't even buy rice. I will fish, she announced to her unhappy house and her tattered scrolls. With this decision firmly made, Chin Yumin took a string and a hairpin for a hook and went to the lake. She stood straight and aloof, arms out, eyes forward, 
line dangling and waiting, only for a little while, before scowling with impatience. There are no fish in this lake, she complained. But before the surface of the water, many fish indeed scuttled back and forth, like monkeys at play in the treetop. Chinyumin shook her fist at the fish and called them uncivil names. Then a melodious splash caught her eye. Ah, Chinyumin whispered. At the next dock sat a fine ginger cat. Now, here's a ginger cat. Actually, there he is. Can you see him? There. Here's this fine ginger cat. He draped his long tail, there's his long tail, into the water. Flick! Out came a fish biting the end. The cat looked at the fish with a solemn look, blinked, and then quickly ate every bit, scales, fin, and all. Well, oh, peerless ginger cat, said Chinyumin, catch a fish for me. The ginger cat blinked his eyes. Certainly, madam. Oh, well, actually, he called her Auntie. Certainly, Auntie. He draped his long, elegant tail into the water and flick, out came a fish on the end. Chinyumin picked it up, stiff deeply, steamed with ginger and soy sauce. This will be delicious. Chinyumin hurried back to her house with the fish and put it on to cook. But as the, amount of the aromatic steam curled up around her gray-haired head, well, this one doesn't have gray hair, she began to worry. I have a fish today, but what will I have tomorrow? She peeked out the window, and the ginger cat was still sitting on the dock, meditating on a pair of mandarin ducks who swam in graceful harmony through the reeds. Ah, she had an idea. Oh, gracious ginger cat, the greedy woman said, joining him on the dock. My house is large, my, head is so my bed is soft. Why not come and live with me? There will be, you'll be safe from dogs, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. All I ask is that you continue to catch fish. I thank you, venerable Annie, said the cat. I accept your offer. You are truly generous. Chinyumin smiled a thin smile and hurried back to her house. From that day, Chinyumin's prosperity returned. Surely her neighbors agreed she had found a charm to make fish jump from the lake into her basket, for every day she arrived at the market with a load of glittering, glistening fish. Her neighbors looked on as Chinyumin hung new scrolls with the characters wise decision and good management on her door and admired the new lacquered bowls that she bought from the merchants. Chinyumin was prosperous indeed. Every day in the afternoon, the ginger cat sat on the dock draped his long elegant tail into the water and flick, he pulled out fish after fish after fish until they were piled up like mountains. Chinyumin rubbed her hands together and counted her, her strings of cash. Auntie, said the ginger cat one day, what would you do if I went away? Ah, oh, grasped Chinyumin, don't leave me, how would I eat? Chinyumin wrung her hands. She could not bear another plunge into poverty. I will stay, Eddie, replied the ginger cat. In the evenings and the warm months, Chinyumin sat in front of her door watching the lake. Whoops. She watching the lake with the ginger cat sitting by her side. So he just sat with her. From time to time, the sound of his purring broke the stillness. Cats like that, they were warm. And Chinyumin was content as she watched the cranes fly overhead. In the evenings of the cool months, Chinyumin sat in front of her fire in the house, watching the coals with the ginger cat at her side. From time to time, the sound of his purring broke the stillness. Chinyumin was content as she watched the embers glow at her feet. Auntie, said the ginger cat one day, what would you do if I went away? Oh! grasped 
Chin Yumin. She hastily stroked his back. Don't do that to an old woman. Chin Yumin wrung her hands. She could not bear another plunge into solitude. I will stay, Andy, replied the ginger cat. One day a beggar came to the door. Please, virtuous lady, he said, have you an old basket in which I may carry my few belongings? Pah, said Jin, Jin Yumin, filthy beggar. There, take that ragged thing. It's no use to me. So saying, she pointed to, an, in, to a torn and tattered, tattered basket that lay just in the sun. Blessings upon you, the beggar said. He hoisted the basket above his head and limped off into town. Chin Yumin cast a thoughtful glance at the lake. It was time for the ginger cat to start fishing for the day. Honorable ginger cat, she called out, where are you? The answer was wind blowing through the trees. Delightful ginger cat, she called, where are you? The answer was waves lapping on the pebbled shore. The ginger cat was nowhere. He's left me, she said. She stood stricken at the doorway, staring at her fine scrolls, wise decision, and good management, mocking her as they rustled in the breeze. No more fish, she despaired. The scrolls rustled again. No more prosperity, the scrolls shivered. No more sitting by the fire, the scrolls flapped forlornly. No more purring, the scrolls fell off their hooks. No more fine ginger cat to sit beside me. Chin Yumin tore at her hair. Wise decision and good management lay in shreds at her feet. In sadness, she took up a brush and wrote the characters for Bottomless Sorrow by the door. Have you seen my ginger cat? She asked the neighbors. Help me find my ginger cat. Her neighbors frowned. When we offered you our help, you scorned us. I beseech you, I beg you, she said. Most humbly, I ask, have you seen my ginger cat? We have not, her neighbor said, taking pity on her bottomless sorrow. But we have seen a beggar with an old basket pass this way. Perhaps he knows something. Chinuman stood as still as a plum tree, rooted to the ground. As sure as the sun rose and set, she knew that the ginger cat had been sleeping in the basket. She had given him away. Where, oh, where has the beggar gone? She asked her neighbors. To the market, they said. She ran as fast as her skinny old legs would carry her to the market. There, to amazement, she found many, many beggars, each with a tattered basket. To her, all beggars looked alike because she had always been too proud to see their faces. Now she did not know which one had her basket. I beg you, she said to the first, venerable old monk, allow me to buy your basket. The beggar bowed and pulled on his thin gray beard for 10 cash, madam. She gritted her teeth, but her ginger cat was worth more than a fish. She paid the beggar and snatched the basket and it was empty. I beg you, she said to the next, spiritual old monk, allow me to buy your basket. The beggar bowed once more, tugged his short stubby beard. Pretend cash, madam. Jin Yumin gripped her teeth and the ginger cat was worth more than in fish. She paid the beggar and snatched the basket. It was empty also. I beg you, she said to the third, Self-denying old monk, allow me to buy your basket. Before each beggar, she humbled herself and paid for their baskets. Her strings of cash were vanishing like water into the sand. No longer she searched for her cat, the more desolate and sad she became. For 10 cash, said another beggar. Chin Yumin pulled at her hair, but all the fish in the middle kingdom were not equal to her ginger cat. He was worth far, far more in companionship and warmth. See, she finally knew what was important. Ten cash to the next, ten cash to another. At last, she had not one single coin left. 
and Chenyu Min was as poor as the beggars. Even poorer, for each of them had ten cash, and she had none. But more bitter than the loss of her cash was the loss of her cat. Let him not catch another fish, she cried to heaven, but still let him be my friend, come back to live with me. In tears, Jin Yumin turned away from the market and trod wearily back to the lake. But before she reached her home, she saw another beggar ahead on the road. This beggar, too, had an old basket. Most scholarly old monk, cried the pr proud Jin Yumin, pity an old woman as poor as you. I beg you, give me your basket. Jin Yumin knelt in the road kowtowed with her forehead to the dust. Her heart cried out for the ginger cat. Certainly, madam, said the, the beggar. If I can take away your bottle of sorrow in this way, I will give you my basket. So saying, he placed the basket on the ground beside her, and he hobbled away. Fear took Chin Yumin hands as she opened the basket. Her breath was quaking in her throat. Inside, Curled in sleep was her ginger cat. There he is. Oh, generous friend, she cried. I have found you again. Good afternoon, Auntie, said the ginger cat, stretching his legs. Is it time for fish? For her answer, Chinuman hugged the cat to her. Today I fish for you, she said. With the cat perched on her shoulder, Chinuman walked back to her home. At the doors of her neighbors, she stopped and bowed. Please honor me by taking a meal at my house, she said. My table is poor, but your presence will make it rich for me. Her neighbors returned the bows and accepted her thanks. And from that time forward, the scrolls on her door said, contented joy. Because what she found out was really important was the love and purring of her cat and the friendship of her neighbors. So I hope you enjoyed this story. We have many more of the folk tales. And so if you like us, say save, say share, and send them along our way, and we will read some more stories for you.